Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another uh, screencast created by uh, yours truly, Mr. Stano. Uh, today, we're going to go on to uh, energy before we really can start going into our meteorology, climate, and some of the other uh, units in this class. We need to know a little bit about energy. Uh, in its most basic form, uh, energy um, is the ability to do work, to do something. It could be moving barbecues, it could be rolling balls, kicking, it doesn't really matter what it is, but anytime we move something or do something, we're using energy. Uh, energy is broken down into two very basic forms, potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is stored energy or energy at rest. Much like if you had a rubber band, pulled it and held it that way. It's got the ability to do work. When you release it, the added rubber band can go flying. It's moved. Uh, kinetic energy is that energy, energy of motion. You take that same rubber band, pull it so that it's nice and tight, and then let go of it that all that potential energy that was stored in it is now being used to move that rubber band. It's the same as the gasoline in a car. The gasoline itself has a huge amount of energy, just but it's in a fuel tank. We can then use that energy with, stored within the gasoline in chemical bonds to then propel or move that car forward, um, and that's our kinetic energy. So very basic potential energy, stored energy at rest. Kinetic energy is just the energy of motion. Uh, what we more of, we don't in earth science really look at the potential and kinetic energy of systems in that way as, a, as its most basics. What we usually look at in earth science is temperature, especially going into meteorology and climate uh, units next. Uh, temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance. Okay, we can use our Fahrenheit scale, Celsius scale, or even Kelvin scale. All of these are actually in the Earth Science reference table. If we take a little switch over here into our reference table, going through, okay, we can move through our reference table and we can actually find the temperature scales that I'm talking about right here. So we're looking at page 13. And you can see here, we have our temperature scale. Our temperature scale, yeah, let's change color here. We have Fahrenheit on the left, Celsius in the middle, and then Kelvin on the right-hand side. Notice that we have some uh, common numbers that we should be familiar with, like the temperature at which water boils. Here, and if you look over, is about 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to 100 degrees Celsius or 373 degrees Kelvin, or sorry, 373 Kelvin, okay? We also have room temperature and the temperature at which water freezes, all here on this scale. Um, you may have learned in the past a formula to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and here in earth science, we just use the, um, uh, sorry, the temperature scale uh, the conversion chart right here. So it makes it a little bit easier. You don't need to you know, worry about any math or anything like that. One very important part of uh, energy that we need to understand is the electromagnetic spectrum. All objects release or emit electromagnetic energy. Anything that basically has some sort of temperature emits electromagnetic energy. You right now, your body temperature is around 98, 99 degrees Fahrenheit. You're emitting electromagnetic energy. Everything emits electromagnetic energy unless its temperature is absolute zero, which is negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 273 degrees Celsius. Our sun emits all forms of electromagnetic energy um, geared towards really three specific that we'll go into, but it does release a little bit of some of the others, but as a whole, that full range of energy is the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Electromagnetic, uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, um, basically travels in wave in waves. The wavelength is extremely important from crest to here to crest right here, is extremely important in determining the type of electromagnetic energy that it is. So from crest to crest, or we can even say from trough to trough, which would be here to here. OK, 
okay, is used to um, tell us or distinguish the different types of electromagnetic energy. Okay, the electromagnetic spectrum is the entire range goes from gamma to radio waves. So from gamma to radio waves, short wavelength equals high energy. Long wavelengths equals low energy. Okay, we'll get back to this in a moment. The electromagnetic spectrum is also found in our earth science reference table. And here it is, if we look at this, this one, and we'll get to the one in the reference table in a moment, it's very basic, shows the wavelength in centimeters. Okay, so if we go to gamma rays, notice it's got 10 to the negative 11th centimeters in size from crest to crest. So this is extremely small wavelength on this side. That's a little symbol for wavelength versus over here, 10 to the third for radio waves. So that's large or long wavelength right here. Okay, if we go to our reference table, page 14, next page, we can see here our electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, decreasing wavelength, they're small all the way on the left here. And notice we got gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, all small wavelength versus long wavelength over here towards radio waves. Um, they definitely made a change from, I think it was like two th um, prior to the 2011 edition where they made you, um, they actually had the wavelengths in centimeters, much like the one we just seen. Uh, here they don't have it anymore. They don't, it's not really, um, for some reason, uh, New York State Regents doesn't require us to, uh, to know that anymore. But they still need to know us whether we have small or long wavelengths. And we can see it here on page 14. Okay, here's our electromagnetic spectrum again. And you can see here, um, blown up a little bit, is this portion. Our visible light portion. Our visible light portion falls in right here between ultraviolet rays and infrared, infrared rays or infrared energy. Okay, wavelength in nanometers right here. And you can see that these are the colors of the rainbow. The visible light, visible light portion is pretty important to us here on Earth. It allows us to see what we will, um, everything that you can see. Okay, some uses of radiation. Uh, we have gamma rays, X-rays, um, which we, people commonly use when you go to the dentist or you break an arm or you need to get checked up. Um, visible portion right here. Infrared, it allows us uh, basically body heat, which uh, we all admit, radio waves. Okay, here's in just an infrared image right here. Uh, basically, it's a camera that picks up the amount of infrared radiation coming off your body or the different levels of it and then uses uh, computers to basically assign a color to the infrared uh, energy coming off you so you can get images like this. I just briefly want to go back to our uh, reference table. Okay, so when we go back to the reference table here, so we have small wavelengths and we have increasing wavelengths on the right hand side. Also, besides being small wavelength, these are high energy. Okay, over here, long wavelengths is gonna be low energy. Okay, so it's just something also to remember. Um, and this goes so ultraviolet or UV rays, which we commonly associate with skin cancer and stuff like that, have relatively high energy, which would make sense. That's why we use sunblock uh, to block out UV rays or even sunglasses have a rating for the amount of UV radiation and the type of UV radiation they can block out because the UV has got a small wavelength or high energy. Infrared, long wave, low energy, and radio waves, which are passing through you right now. Um, anyone that has a cell phone next to them is experiencing a small amount of radiation coming off of it in the form of radio waves. That's how they're able to communicate to the cell phone towers. Um, radio, if it's on near you, those radio waves are going through your body right now, passing for the most part harmlessly through, so you don't need to worry about them because they have low energy. 
okay? Um, X-rays on the exact opposite end, okay? Small wavelength, high energy. This is why you need to wear those lead vests when you go to get uh, X-rays taken at the dentist. They'll put that lead vest over you to kind of take in those, um, to block that high energy from going into you. Okay, moving back. Okay, here's the visible portion of the spectrum again. Uh, these are definitely, you should probably know them, but once again, they're in our reference table. Okay, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which is right around here, and violet. Okay, and we can see the long wave associated with the red over here, short wave with blue and violet. Okay, and once again, it's in the reference table, page 14. Uh, white light, when passed through a prism, will refract out into its component colors or a rainbow. Let's see, red right here with its long wavelength. All the way through all the other ones, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Okay. Short. Wavelength, blue. And all the other colors basically we'll have Roy G Biv right here. So prisms do that. White light is made up of all the colors of the rainbow. Okay, here's a rainbow right here. Um, actually, it looks like we got like a slight double rainbow right here. But you can see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet here. Um, and basically the water droplets in the air will act as small prisms. It refracts as it comes in, reflects as it goes out, and we see a rainbow. Uh, the position of a rainbow basically uh, is depending on where the observer is. Okay, here's a prism again. Notice the white light coming in and then separating out into its component colors. Okay, and prisms can come in all shapes. Okay. So energy coming from the sun uh, is gonna be in the form of electromagnetic waves, which are a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Remember each electromagnetic wave uh, or type of energy is gonna be denoted by its wavelength, which is measured from crest to crest. Short wavelength, high energy, long wavelength, low energy. And we can look at the different portions of the electromagnetic spectrum um, using our reference table on page 14.